I absolutely adore the way human eyes look. And there's 8 billion people on this planet, each and every single one of them with unique eyes. So before long, you're going to want to create it in Inkscape. And today, I'm going to show you how. Hello my friends, welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. My name is Rob from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a human eye. So without further ado, let's get started. Now when you first begin, you're going to start with, of course, a blank canvas. So we're going to need to make the circles that we are going to use for the eye. Now to do this, we're going to need our circle and ellipsis tool, which can be found right here. Now, as I'm going to click and drag to create a circle like this, I'm going to hold shift and control, and that is going to lock the proportions to make sure it is a perfectly symmetrical circle. Now, I'm going to create one around that size. I think that's pretty good. Now, before I convert this to a path, there is also a stroke on it, as you can see when I highlight, and I am going to turn that off so we're going to come down to the bottom left corner hold shift and press the red x that will get rid of any stroke that is on there now that there is no stroke and it's just a black fill i'm going to go to path object to path now with that as an individual path i'm going to change the color now i'm going to do this by opening up my fill and stroke menu which can be found right here but if you're using a previous version of Inkscape, you'll find this toolbar on the top right here. Give it a click and it will open up your fill and stroke menu. Now for this one, I want this just to be a background shape for the actual pupil. So for now, I'm just going to add a radial gradient to it. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to turn the opacity right the way up and I am going to change the color for the center and the outer ring as well now when it comes to the color i'm just going to use a blue but i am going to use another blue for the outer ring as well rather than a black now for the rest of the eye i am going to be using a method using the tiled clones now this is very very similar to using the tiling path effect but it goes way more in depth now in order to do this first we are going to need a piece that we can use for the tiled clones now to do this i am going to use the circle and ellipses tool again and this time i am going to refrain from holding shift and control and just do a very thin and flat circle a little bit like that and again i'm going to change this to its own object by going object to pass and now that i've done object to pass on it i can reduce the size slightly and of course if you have snapping turned on and that gets in the way then by all means you can turn it off now i think i want this to be a little bit thicker than it was but it looks more like a tapered stroke and that looks around perfect to me and i'm just going to move this out of the way because we're going to need a lot of space to work with now what i'm going to do with this is i am going to click it again to get the rotation handles now when i've got the rotation handles up as you can see in the center of the object we get this little plus mark right here this is your rotation anchor and we want to set that off to the left away from the object so i'm going to hold control and then i'm just going to click and drag it along now because i have control held that means no matter how high or low that i go it will always stay in a horizontal line away from the object but if i was to release control as you can see i can now move it anywhere i want holding control again will snap it onto the horizontal axis now i'm going to put it around there 
like that. And now with that done, I'm going to use this as my tiled clone. So I'm going to go to edit, come all the way down to clone, and then create tiled clones. So when it comes to the settings for creating tiled clones, it's set up in a very easy way. But it can be a little daunting when you first see everything. All the settings for tiled clones that you are going to create can be found in these seven tabs. Symmetry, Shift, Scale, Rotation, Blur and Opacity, Color and Trace. The universal settings for creating tiled clones are here at the bottom. When I was playing around with this method earlier, I already have my settings saved from doing that. So what you're going to need is rows and columns selected right here. One row and 100 columns. Now when it comes to the settings within the tabs, we have got symmetry. Now we're going to have simple translation and we're going to keep that as it is. We're going to go to shift. After playing around with it, I found that minus 100 on the shift Y for the row is perfect and when it comes to the column minus 100 on the shift x is perfect now when it comes to scale this is the important one now if i was to take this shape right here and circle it around as you can see it goes around the anchor point now from this point all the way around is 360 degrees now I have got 100 clones. So because I have 100 clones and we are doing increments of 100%, each time it moves, I want the scale X and the scale Y to move 1%. So by the time it gets to the 100th clone, it will be back in the same spot. Now I hope I didn't make that overly complicated for you, but that is why I have got my columns set to one scale x is one scale y is one but i also want it to be a little bit randomized so i have got 50 percent randomization on both scale x and y finally i'm going to go to rotation now when it comes to the rotation we have the angle of the columns and the rows but then we also have randomize now, as I said, I want it to start here, go all the way around in a circle and end right here. So I want it to be randomized 100% and go in a full circle. If I was to set this to say 50% and then hit create, as you can see, there's only 50%. However, if I undo that and I turn this up to 100% and then hit create, we get the exact effect we're looking for. Something that looks a little like this. And now with that done, we can click over everything or we can go control A to select everything and that will select every single object. However, we don't want to edit this circle. So I'm going to hold shift, select that and it will deselect it. Now we have all of these pieces already selected. We can go to path, and combine now we have combined all them separate pieces into one individual piece but here is where the magic will happen now if i just move this over i'm going to select it again to get the rotation handles and with snapping turned on i'm going to move this anchor point back to the center just like that and now if i was to click and drag from one of these corner arrows as you can see it turns around the center now while you're turning you can just press spacebar to stamp a copy and i'm going to do this a couple of times and remember as you can see when you create tiled clones it has a tendency to slow your hardware down so just keep that in mind once you are done i'm just going to right click and duplicate one of them i'm going to change the color 
and then I'm just going to select it again and reduce the size. Not much, just enough. And then I'm going to repeat this, but this time I'm only going to use a couple of copies. But now with this done, what I want to do is I want to change the opacity. So in order to do this without having to select each individual one, we can simply select one piece like this. And then we can go to edit, select same, fill color. And that's going to select all of the different pieces of that color. Now with them all selected, I'm going to I'm going to come down here to where it says group. And again, if you're running a previous version of Inkscape, this bar might be at the top. But this button right here will group all of them pieces together. And then with them all grouped, we can go to our fill and stroke menu and turn the opacity down in half. And of course, change the color to whatever we would like. But at the moment, that will do. Then I'm going to select this piece and repeat the exact same process. Select same, fill color, and then with them all selected, group them together and turn the opacity down. And now I can select them both, reduce the size, and then I'm just going to use my align and distribute menu to center everything up just like that and if you haven't got your align and distribute menu open you can find that right here and now i'm just going to resize all of this and that is pretty much it but if you want and you don't like how vivid and how contrasting it is feel free to go back to your fill and stroke menu and add a little bit of blur just to soften the edges. Now, as you can see, I haven't put a lot of blur on, only 3%, but it looks really good like that. Finally, for the main part of the eye, I also want to select this circle, duplicate it by either holding Control and pressing D or right clicking and selecting duplicate. And now with that duplicated, I'm also going to select the shape behind the bits that you can see coming out away from the circle. And then I'm going to right click and set clip. And now we have something that looks a little like this. Now, when it comes to the pupil, this is done in a very simple way. Again, we are just going to duplicate this shape and then we're going to turn this jet black and then with that done we're going to hold shift and control and we're going to just scale it down until we get it looking however big we want it to but now i'm going to add another small blur to this just to soften the edges and then finally we want to add of course some reflections just to give it that little bit more depth so in order to do this, we're going to duplicate this black circle and then I'm just going to move it off to the side and increase the size. I'm also going to turn the blur off along with the fill by hitting this red X in the bottom left corner and then holding shift and pressing the black. This is going to get a nice stroke around the outside. Now within the fill and stroke menu, I'm going to go to my stroke style tab. And as you can see, it's at 12.718 at the moment. I'm just going to hit the plus symbol until it gets very, very wide. And with that done, I can now duplicate. And then just increase the size ever so slightly. Not by much, and if I turn the opacity down, you can see just how much more I have increased the size. With that done, I am now just going to select them both, go to my shape builder, and we will have something that looks like this. 
Now from this, I want to get rid of the center. I want to get rid of the middle ring here and just leave this one and this one. When I have them both selected by just simply selecting them and to delete objects, I'm just holding shift. And as you can see, it turns pink. And then you can select them while holding shift to get rid of them. Once you're done, you can hit the tick. And of course, you will be brought up with something that looks like this. Now, when it comes to creating the reflection that I want, I am just going to simply cut out a piece from this. Now, before I can do that, I need to union these together. So I'm going to go pass union. And now I'm just going to use my pen tool. Now I'm going to use my select tool, hold shift, select them both. And I'm going to go to pass intersection. Now I'm going to turn this white. And of course, I am going to put this up near the top. And I am going to reduce the opacity. Now that I've reduced that, I can go to my blur, turn that up ever so slightly. Yet again, we do not want it to be too soft. And finally, I am going to use a couple of circles in the same way that I've done this in order to give the impression of a reflection. And just like that, you've created your very own eyeball. And now you know how to make an eyeball, you are free to go and create one yourself and maybe make that eyeball part of a bigger design. I would love to see what you come up with as always, but for now, I will catch you in the next video. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time. Thank you.